Should we always do what the police tell us to do? I was talking with uh, a friend about this who said, well, the cops gave him an order. He should have done what, what the cops said. And, you know, we discussed the overall lack of uh, respect for authority that is plaguing our country. And it is. Uh, we have discussed, as others have, the, the tension and the fear that exists when African-American males are in a threatening or ominous position. Any criminal, obviously, is, uh, uh, provides a fear factor. But uh, Jesse Jackson is the one who said that when he's walking down the street at night and he hears footsteps behind him, that he's relieved when the footsteps are made by somebody who is not African-American. Moment of real candor for him. And I appreciate him saying it. But, but I have this tension, and I'm going to give it to you without resolution. And it is that we want to have respect for law enforcement. But we also don't want to have a police state. The police do not have the authority to tell us what to do all the time. We are not required to obey them all the time. I have a friend who was in um, Maryland, and he was doing a, a picket. They had signs of aborted babies uh, around a, a, an open public access street. They were on public property, exercising their First Amendment rights. The police told him to leave. He said, we're not leaving. This is our right to be here. And they arrested him and a bunch of kids, teenagers, and literally threw them in jail. I, I, if my memory is correct, they spent the night in jail. And the police were sued and lost and had to pay, I don't know, like sixty or $70,000 per person for violating their constitutional rights. Now, my friend could have said, hey, the police told us to do this. We need to listen to the police. But the police aren't God, and the police are not the final arbiter of the law. All right, The, the supreme law of the land is the U.S. Constitution. So I give you that example by way of saying that not every police order is a lawful order. And this mix and match arbitrary decisions. I, I can see why Eric Garner was saying, why, why are you doing this to me? I just broke up a fight. I'm not selling anything. Now, let's assume that he was selling cigarettes one at a time. Big deal. Really? Really? They had five, six police there? And when they choked him and he fell down on the ground, he was saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. He passed out at some point and he, they just left him lying there. No one tended to him until they figured out that he wasn't breathing and then he had, that he had died. All right? The way that they treated him was so disrespectful, was so barbaric, it showed real malice and bull, that bully spirit. We're the cops. You do what we tell you or we're going to choke you out and put you down. Grinding his face into the pavement like they did, overselling cigarettes. Are you kidding me? And so <clears throat> the grand jury there refused to indict. Now, one of the shows that I saw discussing this, um, somebody said that the prosecutor in Staten Island did not want to indict, did not want to indict the officer. And so the prosecutor gets to decide what the grand jury hears and sees, all right? Eric Holder is now has opened up an investigation, and I'm, I'm going to promise you this. That officer is going to be pr prosecuted federally. Officer Wilson in Ferguson will not be prosecuted, but Daniel Pentelio in New York is going to be prosecuted. Guaranteed. Um, they will find probable cause, they will say that his constitutional rights were violated. I'm not saying that he's going to be charged with murder in the federal government, but you can take it to the bank, in my opinion, and that he is going to be prosecuted federally. Well, Randall, what makes you say that? Mark Furman. Mark Furman 
was uh, tried and acquitted by a jury for his part in beating Rodney King. You might recall that back in the 90s. And the federal government stepped in and tried him, Mark Furman, uh, under federal law, and he spent between two and three years in federal prison after he was found guilty in federal court, okay? So I'm telling you that this is so egregious that Eric Holder, who I despise, uh, by the way, Eric Holder and his Justice Department, they've opened up an investigation. I'm telling you they're going to indict him for something. This, this officer is going to go to trial for killing this man with a chokehold that is illegal. I'll be right back. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today.